Hey, hey everybody, Z Garcia here, and today we're going to be trying to catch Pablo Escobar, or possibly trying to be Pablo Escobar and get away with it in Narcos, the board game. This is an all versus one game, meaning one player is going to be playing Pablo Escobar, Patron as they call him in the game, and the other player or players are going to be playing those people in factions and groups trying to catch that character. That player is going to be hiding on the map, they're going to be making a note and hiding that note as to where they're hidden, and then they're going to be deploying their Sicarios onto the board in order to, um, you know, enact their plans. The other players, again, are using their own characters to uh, eliminate these threats and to pinpoint where they're hiding and find them ideally and therefore win the game cooperatively against that one player. The game, of course, is based on the TV show and it is a it has a, a mature theme. Uh, it's going to be dealing mostly with drugs is the main part of the mature theme here. Though there is some bad language, as far as I know it's all in Spanish, but there is some bad language in the game. Ultimately, just a you know, word to the wise that it is a mature themed game. And, you know, it represents violence and drugs and all of those things, so be aware of that. We're going to go ahead and take a look at how the game works, tell you what I think of it after that. But for right now, let's go ahead and cut to the table, take a look at the proceedings here. The action is going to take place on this large board. The board is broken up into different locations, farms, and cities. Some of the cities have airports in them. And then the map is also broken up into three large regions here. One player is going to be taking on the role of Patron. And they are going to be attempting to win the game by either completing three of these objective cards or advancing their glory all the way to 20 here, at which point they will become Presidente. The other player or players are going to be playing these four factions here. And so if you've got only two players, then one player will control all four of these. Whereas if you have three players, one player will be Patron and the other two will divvy these up however they so choose. So one player might play the DEA and the Cali Cartel, the other player might play the Colombian Police and Los Pepes. And the players are going to be taking alternating turns until the game's conclusion. What these players are trying to do is capture Patron twice. If they do that, then all of these players together will win the game. The turns are going to be in this order. You'll have Patron take a turn, and then one of these factions will take a turn. And again, that could be a single player, and that is their entire faction, if you're playing, say, with five players. Or it could be just simply one of the four I'm controlling in a two-player game. Then it'll go back to Patron, and so let's say the DEA already went, it comes back to these players, and then maybe Los Pepes will take a turn. And then back to Patron, and then back here, and then one final and fourth time. That means one season. And you are going to be playing in the game three seasons until the game is over, or if it's over before that, then you'll simply stop and see who the winner is. So that's the absolute maximum length of the game. So now we're going to go ahead and take a look at how the game flows, how those turns go, and I'm going to show you a Patron turn and then take you through one of these turns for the factions here. After some setup, uh, which mainly entails the factions putting out their characters onto the board, the Patron player is going to do a few things. They're going to reveal the objectives for the season and do any of the actions that they entail. In this case, this one says that when revealed, you place two lab tokens in any farm locations. So they're going to take two of the lab tokens and they will put them in farm locations on the board and put a cube on each that represents the drugs that are being uh, produced at that farm location. Then they are going to assign these tokens to the different characters to denote how strong they are, how difficult it would be for the opposition to take them down. These would be hidden, of course. I'm showing them to you here. You have values on these between 0 and 4. And then they are going to um, have a hand of 5 cards and they are going to begin play. Now, at, that, at some points in there, they also have to decide where they are starting on the map. And so you're going to be using one of these sheets per game to figure out where you're starting. You're going to write that in here. And you're going to keep that hidden, of course, from the other player or players. 
So Patron might say, okay, I'm gonna start uh, way over here. There's not a lot of heat over there. They're gonna pick that spot. It's uh, 04, they're gonna write that down right there. And they have a reference map here on their sheet as well. And then they begin their turn. So their turn has three parts. The first thing they may do is they may spend one buck here in order to move one of the Sicarios that are on the board up to three spaces. During the first round, there's no one on the board, but later on they can do that. Second step is not optional. This is a must do. And that is they have to play one of the cards from their hand in order to bring a new Sicario out onto the board. And they've got a few different choices here. So they might play this card, for example, for Gustavo. And they would have a couple of choices. They can bring out Gustavo onto the board, or they could just be discarding this card to bring out one of these two special characters here, Leon and La Kika. And so, let's say they're going to go ahead and bring out Gustavo. They're going to play this card and bring this out. Now, this character has a couple of values above where they happened to end up and set up, which is the first one being how far away they may be from where Patron is hiding on the board, and the second one is going to give Patron some glory if this character is still on the board and not eliminated at the end of the season. And so they're going to go ahead and decide they're going to put this character there. And again... Uh, I said that uh, Patron was hiding over here, so that's fine. One, two, three, that's okay. And of course, that starts to give information to the other side. Great, they have to be three spaces away. That's still quite a large group, but it's some information. Now that that's happened, then uh, any special abilities on the card would be applied, and now that character is going to take two actions. The actions for the regular Sicarios here uh, is one of three things. They can put out a farm somewhere where they are or adjacent. They can put out one of these control tokens, again, where they are or adjacent, and the farms go in the farms, of course. These go in the cities. Uh, and uh, so they might do that as one action. They might put a, a farm out here on this farm spot. Actually, they'll do that. They'll shut down that airport there. And then the final choice is to remove a blockade token from somewhere out here. So if there was a blockade token there, which prevents the Sicarios from moving there, they could remove it instead. By the way, these control tokens work the same way in reverse. It prevents the uh, other characters from moving or utilizing that location there. So that might be their action, and that's their turn. Then they draw back up to five cards, and that's it. Now the other player or players are going to take a turn and they are going to play very differently. The first thing they must do is decide who is going to take a turn. It could be any of the four factions at the beginning and then later on any of the ones that have not activated yet. So the players among themselves are going to decide that the Cali Cartel here is going to be the active uh, faction for this turn and both of these characters are going to activate in turn. And so to activate one, I have to pick the one I want to do, which is this character right here. They're going to flip that card over. Part one is they may move that character uh, up to two spaces. Uh, again, making sure that they do not break any of the movement rules. That Im involves not moving through these control tokens or any of the Sicarios. And the Sicarios themselves, again, follow very similar rules. They cannot move through the uh, different agents, and they cannot go through the blockades. Uh, the Sicarios also cannot use airports, while these characters can do so. And now they are going to, again, pick a character. So I'll say this one, they can move. I'm going to choose not to move it. And then they take one of these three cards here, which are randomly dealt from the deck, and they are going to assign it to one of these spots here to take an action. So, for example, the player might take this two, Assign it right here, which is destroy labs. That's the action. The number you destroy, the number on the card. Hence the X printed there. And this has to be from where they are or adjacent spaces. So that player is going to destroy this lab and destroy this lab. Now we're going to activate the other character in this faction. Now we got into here, so we're going to flip that one over. That character again may move up to two spaces, so we'll have the move to there. And they are going to use a card as well for an action. So in this case, they are going to attack a Sicario. And we're going to put that right there. 
and we're gonna attack an adjacent one, this one right here. So, the attack strength is two. We're gonna go ahead and reveal the token that was under that character, which again was hidden from uh, that player. We reveal that and the value on it is one. So that character is captured and eliminated from the board. So these locations are going to allow you to destroy labs as you already saw. They're going to allow you to attack the Sicarios. This one is going to allow you to remove the blockade, uh, to remove the controlled tokens or add your own blockade tokens. This one here allows you to attempt to capture Patron and you are going to play a card there. You may move an extra number of steps equal to the number on the card. So you get your free two and possibly two more. And then you must select an area where you are or around where you are and say, I think Patron is there. The player will answer you truthfully. If they are not, nothing happens. If they are, they are captured. If it's the first time they are captured, they immediately escape, write a new location of where they're hiding. If the second time they're captured, game's over, and those players are going to win the game. And then these three spots down here allow you to uh, investigate and try to narrow down where Patron might be hiding. These take specific values. A three must go here, a two and a one, respectively. And you are going to get some information. So if we put a one here, Patron must tell you, depending on the character that took that action, let's say this character is the one who did that, then Patron must tell me if they are in the same region as this character is or not. That's it. It's a yes or no question. If it's yes, I can narrow it down to these. If it's a no, I know they're not in there. They're in one of the other two. The middle one has to be triggered with a two and the player is going to tell me what type of space they're in. If it's a farm or if it's a city location. And then this one activated with a three, the player must tell me a range from the character triggering the action as to how far away, how many spaces they are away from me. But they tell me two values. They might say two spaces away or four spaces away. And only one of the, those two pieces of information, of course, will be the true uh, information. The other one is simply a way to mislead players. One final thing is that the, uh, the different factions here have special abilities. Things such as, for example, I'll show you one. The DEA characters here, these two, are going to have some special small cards that they may use each once per game. And they are going to allow you to move two extra steps when moving, twice per game, or refresh some of these small cards. Again, twice per game, you can refresh one or two cards in the display there. All right, so that is Narcos, the board game. Overall, I liked the game. I thought it was a well-designed game. It's one that manages to do the cat and mouse style of play in a very clean, straightforward, pretty simple play. It's a little long. I'll get to that in just a bit. And some of the parts verged on not just simple, but a little simplistic. And... Uh, that left a little, uh, you know, left me a little wanting. Overall, like I said, I enjoyed it. But after each session, I do feel like, huh, I could use a little more, um, I don't know, a little more oomph, a little more action, a little more uh, moments of, in, of interest. But again, those things would come at the expense of simplicity. And I like how simple the game is. So it's a tricky thing to... Uh, you know, to explain exactly. I rate the game about a 7 out of 10, though. I will say that. So that's not bad. It's, I do enjoy it. And I'm going to tell you why I enjoy it. Again, like I said, my main issue, and I'll start here, is that the game is a little long. It lists 100 minutes. For how simple the game is, that does feel a little long if it takes the whole time. Sometimes it's, it's over way before that because one player wins. Or one side, I should say, wins. Um, and then it won't be that long, but it could technically be that long if the game draws out to its conclusion But everything else I do enjoy the theme. It's certainly again an adult theme I don't have a problem with that but be aware of it uh, And I wrote here that it feels like a cat and mouse game where the mice smuggle drugs And that's kind of what it is, you know, they're gonna be deploying these characters They're gonna be moving around the board making things harder for the different factions at play, the DEA, the you know the Colombian uh, police, things like that. Uh, it's a cool theme. It works well. I think they did a nice job here adapting 
what I think the show is about, because be aware, I've never seen the show. But I think they did a good job of adapting what the show is about to a board game. The style they went with, that hide-and-seek style game, works really well here. It's, it's well implemented. The aesthetics, I think, are great. Great artwork. It's all very congruent. It's all illustrations. No screen captures, any of that. Fantastic. And the components are good as well. Uh, but the artwork really is superb. I really enjoy the... Uh, just the look of everything. I, I like the illustration style here. Some of the minis are a little similar. It's a little hard to tell apart some of those characters. Um, but again, I don't think it's ultimately a deal breaker or anything. They they give you the bases to help you out with that. And then the, the other teams, they have two figures and they're color coded to each other. So it's fine, you know. Replayability. There are enough moving parts here. Though the game, again, is simple to make the players want to try again. You know, that that first game is going to just sort of be a figuring it all out, kind of know what to focus on sort of game. You're, you're going to play, but you're not going to play well, probably. You're just sort of going to be going through the motions. After that, you're going to want to play again to figure out what you want to focus on. You know, depending on the game, depending on what's happening, do you prioritize finding uh, Patron, right, on the board. And you just ignore dealing with the uh, Sicarios at the moment. Do you make sure you wipe them off the board and put pressure on uh, Pat Patron that way? What do you do about the uh, farms, right? you got to take them off the board or their income is going to skyrocket. These are all, of course, flipped from the other point of view if you are playing that side. So, yeah, there's enough moving parts where I think you're going to be, you know, driven to try this again. I got I to gotta give this another go. That's a good thing. Ease of play. Like I said, it's a simple game, but some of the things are simplistic. Here's what I mean, okay? Uh, the tokens, for example, that go on the board. The blockade tokens, the control tokens. It's just, uh, they, they're so clearly two sides of the same coin. And they literally are printed on both sides of each of those cardboard coins. But it's they, they're not very interesting. It's like, oh, I'm going to stop you from moving in here. Okay, I'm going to remove it on my turn. And I'm going to put one of my own here so you can walk in there. Oh, and then you on your turn are going to remove it? Okay. So it's a little tit for tat. That, that's uninteresting. That aspect of the game limits movement on the board. Sure, I get it. It needs to be there. But it's... Um, uninspiring. Lastly, tactics, strategy, luck, all of those things. There's a little bit of luck, certainly. Players are going to have cards that they have to pull from, all those things. But there's a fun amount of, of tactics here. I love the mechanisms, all the mechanisms that have to do with finding where the player is hidden. Those are all neat. The idea of them hiding somewhere and every time they deploy someone, it has to be within a certain number of spaces up to that many, right? Doesn't mean they're that far away. I like that. I like the way you find the character with those three plays. They have to tell you, you know, if they're in your region, what type of place they're on, how far away, but they can bluff you. Those are fun. That, that, that makes for one of my favorite parts in the game, and it's that finding where someone is hidden on the board, walking over there saying, I think you're here. Did I get it? Did I not get it? That's the best part of the game, honestly. Everything else is moving parts to make that not the whole game. And some of those parts are neat. But a lot of it is um, just sort of feels like it needs to be in play to simulate the theme, to simulate what's happening in the world that the game has, uh, you know, created. So there you go. That is Narcos the Board Game. Thanks for checking this out, everybody. Oh, by the way, I almost forgot. I need to give this game a seal. It gets a seal of approval because it gets a 7 out of 10. That's how that works. Uh, so that does it does have a seal of approval from me. I approve it. I think it's a well-done game. Uh, anyway, like I was saying, I'm Z Garcia, and I'll see you all on the next one. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com.